I recently was working with a student about what seemed to be some strange behavior happening with the increment operator. I think sometimes we don't understand the difference between a pre-increment operator and a post-increment operator. So that is what we're going to deal with in this tutorial. Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript where we help bridge the gap between novice and expert. To be notified about new tutorials, make sure to click that bell button and subscribe. Also, check out the discount links to all my courses that I've included in the description of this tutorial. And if you'd like to become a patron of this channel, I would appreciate the support. There's a link in the description for that. Now, we frequently see increment or decrement operators in for loops. But when these are used inside of a statement or an expression, you may at times notice some odd behavior. However, they are working as they should. We just need to understand how they work. So let's start with a simple example that illustrates the difference between pre and post. Now, in all of these examples, I will be using the increment operator, which is the plus plus operator. But the same thing applies to the decrement operator, which is represented by the minus minus. So here's the simple example. I'm going to declare a variable, set it equal to 5, and then I'm going to declare another variable and set it equal to that variable and add the increment operator after it. And then we will simply log to the console both of those variables like that. Now, one thing I want to mention about the increment or decrement operator at this point is it can only be used on variables, elements of an array, or a property of an object. So you can't use it on a number. Really quick, if I do in the console 5 plus plus, you can see we get an error. It doesn't allow that. Now, let's see what this returns. And as you take a look at it, what do you think it's going to return? What will I be? What will J be? Let's go ahead and refresh this. And you can see that I is 6 and J is 5. So basically, what happens with the increment or decrement operator in the post? We're talking about post because this comes after the variable. So when it's used as a post increment operator, first off, the thing it does is it increments its operand, which in this case is i. So increments i makes it 6, but evaluates with the unincremented value. So this whole thing evaluates with the 5, not the 6 that has been incremented. So that's the way we need to think of the post increment or post decrement operator. It does increment it or decrement it, but it evaluates the expression using the unincremented value. And so J ends up being five, I ends up being six. Now, if we just swap this around like this, In that case, they both are 6. Because in this case, it increments the operand and then evaluates, uses the incremented value. That's what the pre-increment or decrement operator does. Now, let's make this a little more complex. So, I'm going to comment that out. And let's declare a variable A, set that equal to 5. The variable B, and set that equal to A increment times 5. Now, this is where it can get a little bit confusing about what is going on. So let's log to the console. A first, and I'll do a second line just to keep them separate. And we'll log. B, like that. Let's take a look at what this is going to be. First, think about that for a minute. If you need to pause the video, great. Do that and pause it, pause it and think about what this is going to be. Now, remember the rule. It increments its operand, but evaluates 
using the unincremented value. Now, if you think about it that way, you can figure out what the results are going to be. So let's go ahead and see those results. 6 and 25. So A is 6. That goes to 6 because of the increment operator. But B is 25 because it evaluates using the unincremented value. So it's 5 times 5 instead of 6 times 5. Now, if we switch to the pre-increment operator like that, then you can imagine it's going to be 30. There we go, 30. So I think both those examples illustrate the difference between pre and post increment. And I think the key is remembering the rule with how increment and decrement work. It increments or decrements its operand and evaluates using the unincremented value. Now, I want to just show one little puzzle. And I think this was put together to fool people. And this is what started the initial conversation with, with one of my students. Was this, was this little puzzle here. And I had to think about this for a while to figure this out. Because it does get a little bit confusing. So take a moment and figure out what you think z is going to be. What value will z have when this is done? We start with 7. We increment x sine to y. We increment y and take the remainder of that divided by x. Let's go ahead and see what that value is. Refresh. It's 7. Now, can you figure out why? Why is it 7? So let's walk through this. So x is assigned a value of 7. y is then assigned a value of 7. Because remember, it increments x, but it uses the unincremented value. And so y is 7. But now x is 8. So now when we take y, and remember the increment, it increments y, but it evaluates using the unincremented value. So 7 divided by 8, getting the remainder would be 7. And that's what gets assigned to z. And so this little puzzle, I think, is set up to confuse people because they see that that value comes out of 7. And then they're not thinking that that came from the remainder. They're thinking it came from this original value. And it's just a little puzzle to confuse people. But it is an interesting way to illustrate what's going on with the increment operator, the post-increment operator. Obviously, things would be different if we did the pre-increment operator. All right. I hope that simple discussion was helpful. If so, please hit the like button. And remember, subscribe. Also, I've provided discount links to all my courses in the description section. And if you'd like to become a patron of this channel, I would appreciate the support. For a certain level of support, you can get access to the code files to all of the tutorials. You can also contribute by visiting my website. You can follow the link for both in the description. Click the bell button to be notified about new releases. I release a new tutorial each week. And thanks for watching.